Hi everyone, my name is Abi. Uh, and in today's video session, I'll be walking you through uh, form accessibility. Basically, I just want to show you how to approach uh, form accessibility, how to build an accessible form, how to build an accessible form. Uh, today's uh, video session will be practical based. I will start by creating the HTML part of it. Uh, I try as much as possible to flesh it out with uh, uh, CSS. But uh, I think we can just go into practical without explaining some key terms. Uh, key terms such as web accessibility. <coughs> Excuse me. And how web accessibility connect to form accessibility. So in a simple term, web accessibility means, web accessibility is just an aspect of web development that is aimed at to ensure that web users or the end users get the best uh, user experience out of the content uh, in the web. Uh, basically, uh, Web accessibility is just trying to make sure that uh, the website or the the web page that you build as a front end engineer or front end developer is good enough to be used appropriately or efficiently by the web users. As we all know. The web users uh, can be categorized into two. There are ordinary users, users without disabilities, and there are users with disabilities. Uh, in the aspect of users with disabilities, uh, it includes users with disability that varies from uh, visual impairment, hearing impairment, cognitive disorder, and so on and so forth. And uh, web accessibility is not uh, only targeting the users with a disability. It also targets users with without uh, disabilities. Uh, you and I can attest to it that sometimes we would like to just use our mouse to browse through the page to fill in the form, we don't want to go with the mouse. So if you if you are on a website or a web page that is not built uh, well, you may not be able to get the best out of it using the keyboard. So what web accessibility is just trying to say is that uh, there are some guidelines, there are some things you should put in place when you are building for the web, that we ensure that all the users across the world consuming the content of your website have the best experience. So we all know that uh, one of the major components of a web page or a website is form. So a, a form that is web built, that is web, web built uh, to ensure that uh, most of the users, if not all, can effectively use it uh, without or with disabilities. So if we say a form is an accessible form, we are talking about a form that uh, an assistive technology can leverage on, uh, assistive technology such as uh, the brain, such as the screen reader, uh, an accessible form should be able, uh, I, I mean, a, a screen reader should be able to tell someone who is visually impaired that this is the form, and this form you have to also field, you have to also uh, field. Uh, a good example can be a sign-up form 
So the screen reader will tell the, the, the user that this is a sign up form and the first field is the email, the second field is this and that. So that is what uh, uh, form accessibility is all about. And your role as a front-end engineer or front-end developer is to ensure that you have you have imbibed the measures you have put into considerations. Uh, you have put into consideration uh, the measures that will ensure that all the technologies that users are using in line uh, that users are using to view or to consume your content can actually give the users the best user experience. And um, uh, a good starting point is to use uh, the native HTML element. And in an area whereby you don't, there is no available native HTML element, that is when the way area comes into place. Uh, that is where you can use a div to create a form with a uh, role attribute. You can do that. So, but it's a tedious work. You will need a lot of things to be put in place. So there are some functionality that is uh, uh, already built in the browser that any form you build with div, uh, having an, a, a role attributes will not be able to get from the web browser or any assistive technology just because you are building it from scratch. So, so the, the, the essence of this uh, why assistive, maybe I should just try and just uh, so a, a, a lot of things will not, will not come in place for you if you are just building it. If you look at it, this is just uh, what it entails. So this divine what an element does, you can just say, uh, you can change a form and say it's not my form, it's the div with this. So, but in most cases, there are cases whereby you need to implement this. There are some elements that are just new elements and you want to use it. There are cases whereby you won't uh you won't have available for you any native uh, uh html element then you can just use like a div to actually implement that with role attribute by the time you uh assign the role attribute to a div and you say maybe uh a banner a navigation a form a what have you an assistive technology will definitely understand that. It's just that uh, it all depends on what and what functionality you have provided for such uh, element. So I think that's just basic uh, introduction to web accessibility, form accessibility, uh, assistive technologies. So everything is just connected. So I would like to reiterate that uh, you as a front-end developer, all you just need to do is that uh, you build, uh, ensure that you build your website using the right uh, tools, the right HTML element. Make sure that uh, you ensure that uh, the users who are using your website give the best user experience. Uh, when they want to click a button, they should just struggle before they can click the button. You make sure that the contrast, the color contrast is awesome. Uh, you make sure that uh, you have a label, for instance, a uh, couple with uh, an input element. So, so that's what this today's uh, video will just be based on. I uh, will be, uh, I will be walking you through what an accessible form looks like. So this is Repulit. Repulit is uh, just another kind of a, a code pen. So I just created a new uh, Repulit. Uh, account, I can create another one if you want. Um, this is uh, create new one. You can create in Node.js here, but I'm creating an HTML, CSS JavaScript application. <clears throat> so I can see accessible, 
accessible HTML form. So you all know that um, this form you see here, we only want to use uh, HTML and CSS. So I'll be deleting this. Then I'll be doing some cleanup uh, as far as uh, this is concerned. I think I should just delete everything within this body. So as you can see, this is a typical HTML page. Uh, you must, if you are, if you if you want to get the best out of uh, uh, the technologies, the web browser, the user agents, uh, the assistive technology, you need to actually put this here. What this is talking about is that uh, this document you are about to consume is telling the user agent, the web browser, is an HTML document the type of the document that's doc type html now the other thing is here which is the html so ensure that you have uh, a language attribute stated here to st specify the language if you are if you want your website to be a norwich or any other language you can just french and any other language you can just put it here so i'm telling the browser entity that this page you are about to view is an html uh document and the language we use to write everything that is an English so then we have the header I mean the head uh, tag and you know the head tag is just to uh, present some better information to the web browser everything you see within the <coughs> opening tag and the closing tag of head tag is uh, uh, is meant for the uh, browser and other assistive technology or other user agent, agent there so like i said uh in the previous uh, video uh meta chassette ucf she's is just talking about the character encoding that we're using for this page the viewport is saying that uh, the width uh of this page should be the width of the device that you are viewing if you are viewing it on the mobile phone uh, mobile uh, device you should get the width of that mobile device so the same thing here another thing is this uh an assistive technology needs this so because if you if uh, a visually impaired user is trying to uh, get some information from this the screen reader will just be able to tell you are currently on this page and the title of this uh, page is also so so we should be able to just adjust this to uh, accessible accessible html form so that's it and you all know this this is just a link the css file here to the html uh file here and uh, the body is everything you see on the page everything if you look at this everything you see here is whatever we have in the body um so how do we begin it's very simple uh i want to create uh an accessible form so i would like to just have like a kind of a name because this is just uh in the old page i just want to have a form so i wouldn't like to just use like any session i would like to just use a normally you should have like the head the header you have the main you have the body so for the sake of time just go on it and just make sure that i'm having the main then inside the main i can just have a section because there might be other things i would like to have here so i would like to just have everything there then it's good for you to at least have a kind of heading tag here to try and see what exactly the session is all about and this is like a kind of a sign up a sign up form so then i can have my form this is my form so i have to just say, say it here. <clears throat> there are some attributes that comes within this uh, uh, form uh, one of it is action we have method so uh if you, the, the action attribute is just saying that uh, you know usually a web form is just uh, the component of the way that we use to get information from the user. So say for instance, the sign up form, uh, we use it <clears throat> to get some information from the user, probably to get the user name, I mean the email and the password, or probably it could be gender and what have you. So, but because we are not actually uh, sending the data anywhere, so I will just leave it this way. So, but if you want to send it, then you can just say action and specify what script one can, can can get the data from the form so you just have to be there then the method part is just uh uh telling us what uh 
method, what kind of request I will try to fire. It could be post, it could be uh, get, it can be what I think by default is get method there. So we are not going there. So I will just now focus on the, uh, what's it called? The, the, the controls, the field inside the form. Basically, I do, uh, pardon me, I don't have like a prototype to show you that this is what we want to do. It. But let me just explain. In, in the form, we want to have like four fields. The first one is the email, the second one is the username, we have password and we have retype password, the kind of confirmation password. Then we have a button, so that's it. So I think um, I can just have a class here. Maybe I should just call it, uh, let me just call it card because I would like my phone to look like a card. So we're still going there, but let me just see. So now each field I want to have here be in the form of a class. Then inside it, I will have a class at least for me to be able to uh, style each of the field. Because I would like each field to look alike. So I will just call it like a form field. Then um, what is so I can just come down here. Uh, in a field, you it, it, it is good. Uh, we recommend that you 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 build you every every control should have uh, the input as well as the label. Okay, so you can decide to put the label anywhere. You can put it before the input or you put it after the input. But for me, I'm putting it there. I'm putting it before so another thing that for every label you have there is a way you can connect the label to the input so we use the four uh, uh, uh attribute to do that so i can just come out well, then what is that label for just for email so i have that so i can have my input here then the first attribute you need to state here is the type to tell the browser that this particular uh, uh, input box is email. And one thing about this, uh, uh, this type attribute is that uh, it, it brings in some validation functionality just by default to this. So if you specify an input to be an email, uh, if a user forget to just put in something which is not of uh, email, email that, that type, uh, it won't accept it. So browser, there are some functionality that comes by default with browser to just uh, implement that. So you have to put the type. So the type is email. I will have my ID, which is email as well. I need to put it in there. Then uh, you can decide to use single quote or double quote, doesn't matter. Uh, name, Let's say email, and that's it. This is a typical form field. So, then I said sometime, I, I said that uh, uh, we can connect the label to this. Let me just give you, if I run this, you see what is happening here. You can see it. So, there is a way that, uh, you know, most times you, you want to enter the email, you have to come here. But sometimes it is a good uh, idea uh, to not necessarily click on this anywhere within ear to ear you can click it and you just get it so if i want a station whereby when i click email this browser should, should know that i'm also pointing to this so to do that is to connect the id attribute of the input to the four attributes of the label so this is the id this is the value the email so i have to make sure that i have email here if the value of the four attribute of label is not the same thing as the i the value of the id in the input it means that we are not going to connect it together so if i save it and just come down here you can see you can see now so anywhere you click either this or this you are still on the uh, same okay. all right so 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 that is that about that so i would like to just uh, 
copy and paste this in five times like i want to have for five so i have the for email you see everything will be just email so i would like to have for password so i'm going to change this to password probably we should just change everything to password yeah let me just go with this uh shoot key on the, 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 the password okay now we change this level the password as it and um for this uh before password i need username so this one will also be what username the type here will be text uh this is username sir and same thing this is username okay so i would like to move this just above that i'll say uh i don't know okay good all right i have this so another thing i have to tell you this the type of text is just ordinary text it could be anything just of an numeric kind of value but for, for for type in this case whenever anything you declare as type that is why you see that uh, maybe can i just run this and you see you see the, the automatically is not revealing at all the value you enter in here is not revealing so you have to make sure when you are declaring input you have to come with the type all these things uh allow you to benefit for some inbuilt functionality you, you, you will get some benefit from a, a browser if you if you do it that way so uh, i think the next one should be retype retype type underscore password and this one is retype retype password this one also is password so i don't want i want to hide whatever i'm typing i don't want someone else to pick it up uh, this is the type underscore password and uh, this is retype another thing i would like to just mention here is the attributes uh name that normally uh the value you get from form comes in the form of a jc a key value pair so if i do fire uh, i will say let me just finish this then for this i'll come back to that uh, the name attributes so i will just explain it so i'll come down and say button and type submit okay now say submit submit so that is that uh, about that um another thing i will have to do let me just okay let me come back to this uh name attribute usually uh, let me just come back in usually this is it here so i would like to just view this in a new tab we just come down here you see it here okay if i just enter anything uh you can see i what something is happening here maybe i should just explain this is an auto feed kind of uh, functionality inbuilt in the, in the browser so and I'm, I'm able to get this thing simply because uh if you come down here the type the id and the name is uh something familiar to the to the uh, browser so usually when people build a sign up page a login page the email normally has the name this so if paraventure someone has used uh a a login uh interface on this browser whereby you enter the email immediately click submit browser can just store the data thinking that probably the next time you want to type it you just try and do a kind of auto fill for you so that is what is happening here so but if i change the name this name to something else say email 
uh, iframe, maybe just anything. Let me just do it that way. If I just fire it and come back here and just do this, I might not get it. Just because for the first time I'm coming to this page, the browser doesn't understand that there is a value or there is a data with a key of that name. But it, it knows that there is, a, there is a data in this browser with a uh, uh, key value pair data, let me just see that way, whereby the key is the name I just give to that, my, uh, my input. So if I change it back to this, I will get that back. So you have to make sure that uh, you do things, there, there is, you should do it the way people used to do it so that you get some benefit there. So, and you you might not you might not know the benefit of this until uh, you meet some users some web users whereby they are still lazy to type so they want to get it they want to get that functionality back so you can see some are too lazy so they don't want to type out everything out of us you can just go ahead and just do something there so you have to go that so if i just supply some data here supply some data here like click submit don't forget that I'm trying to just let you know the importance of having the name attribute there. You can see, this one is say email, and I put the value here. So this value you see here is just like a kind of key value pair, saying that the name, the email, whatever I enter in the email is getting the value here. This is for username, this is for password, and this is for uh, retired password there. So that is just that there. Then before we move on to CSS, I would like to just talk about a bit of validation here. You need to put it there. You need to uh, tell your user if they are getting something wrong uh, in your form. Probably someone is not typing uh, the email correctly. Uh, you should be able to tell the user that, uh, well, you are not typing it correctly. Or you want to tell the user what field is required, what is not required. What is required and what is not required. So you have to actually uh, say that. So the, thing, the the first validation here, you can just say required here. So we're telling you that uh, if a user fails to enter email or valid email, we're not going to accept any submission from this form. So likewise, I don't want to require the username because we can get it later. So uh, I want to require the password. Um, again, I want to require the type password because I want password confirmation. Mission. So other other things here is there are other validation like pattern. Sometimes you want to tell like especially uh, you want to tell yourself you don't want to get rely on the functionality from the browser. You want to see this is what the username should look like. You can just use pattern to do that, or uh, you can just see I want a username with uh, minimum length of like three. So you can just say that like say me. Um, Mill and three uh less than so if I save it and come down here and just reload this page, you see what I'm trying to say here. You can see let me just click submit. You can see it's telling me something here. You say that please uh, this is actually uh, affecting <laughs> what I'm having here. <laughs> so you, you, you get you, you get what I'm trying to say now. You can see this is it here. So if I come continue, okay. Let me just enter a value here. See, please lengthen this test to three characters or more. You are currently using one character. So that those validation just come. You have to just put it that way. So I have to just say that. That is also is so important to your user because some of them will get lost one way or the other. Some, maybe a few of them will get lost. So you should provide enough information for them. Uh, this is just a way of handling all those validation of a thing in the HTML part. In the CSS, you want to make sure that uh, you like, use like border, you use like uh, two tips to tell that uh, this is what we really wanted to do, or some labeling, or some something like background color and what have you to tell. So this is just uh, the HTML part of it. So I would like to just move on to the CSS part of it here. Uh, so if you look at the CSS, I wanted to pay attention here. I just have like a card here, this thing. So first of all, I would like, what I want to achieve here, I would like to move this form to the center here. And I would like to have that uh, form, just especially this form, to be like a kind of card. 
So I think first of all, let me just think of uh, centering it. So I will come down here. I uh, will see. Uh, uh, let, let, me, let me just say something here. First, I would like to just create like a kind of a root zero class here, where I can get, uh, where I can keep my CSS variable, so I can have something like full width or full size, and set the value to be hundred percent. The essence why why I'm having this is that uh, I think I might need to replicate hundred percent represent. So instead of me doing that, why can't you just uh, use the CSS variable there and just say var and broken dash dash full width. So I will still need more anyway. So I will continue and say uh, another thing I might like to just put it here is that yeah, I can just say like uh, I want to set a party or something. Uh, you, you, a lot of people used to do this and say all oh, and use all selector to just like a kind of normalize the CSS that comes with a browser. Usually, every browser has a way of a kind of styling and image the styling they give to each of the elements that comes from the HTML. So, if I want to uh, uh, normalize everything, if I want to say no, no, don't do anything to you, I just want you to go in my own way, I can just say uh, CSS to be, I mean, the padding to be zero, the margin. To be zero. Uh, if I just run this, you see what you have. You see everything. So with this, this is part. Sorry. With this, I'm rest assured that uh, if you view my website in uh, a lot of uh, uh, browsers, I'm rest assured that you won't have like some parties trying to uh, format my page. The way I didn't even plan to have it, so I'm trying to control the the, the, the layout, the design of my uh, application. So uh, one, 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 another thing uh, you have to put uh, into consideration is that uh, uh, if you go to Facebook, you have the feeling that I'm I'm in the, I'm in Facebook. If you go to Twitter, you go. So you have you can do that at, in, in your website. If anybody comes to your web page, you have the feel that I am in this website. So a way to do that is to use a kind of normalized CSS. Try and control everything. Don't allow uh, default styling to uh, affect the design. So that's what I'm trying to achieve here. So this one, is uh, this you are seeing here is coming from a, a Grammarly, a kind of a, a spelling checker. So let's just move on. So I will target my main element, and I will see the width should be hundred percent which is var dash dash full i can see my height um let me just go with that and see my height should be uh should i just go with uh, maybe let me go that might not work for me i would like to use vh kind of a unit uh obviously full size then um because I want to center, I would like to just make sure that the display is set to flex to make it a flex boss uh, uh, container. Then I would like to justify content to center. Then uh, I would like to align items to center. So let's see what comes out of this. So as you can see, you see it now. So that's just the uh, first part of then another thing I would like to just move on. Let me go back to my HTML and see. I would like to um what's it called? What's it called? What's it called? Okay, it doesn't matter. I can target this session and tell that everything should just go to the center. I can just set a kind of width or something like that, but I don't want to do that. I can just change this to uh make this to be a flex container. And I can use that to just center this uh, sign up because I want this <coughs> sign up to just be in the center. So let me just go and do that. To do that, you can still do the same thing. Um, I don't want to let me just come here. I can just say, um, 
you can see section and come down here and see maybe I should just go with this uh, copy and come down here and do something so it is good so this is actually <clears throat> uh, trying to center it but uh, something is happening here this is not expected I want this uh, sign up page to come here <clears throat> the reason why it's not coming here is because <clears throat> excuse me is because uh, by default when you said a container to this is the containers display to flex the flex duration is uh, automatically uh, row so and I don't want to be I don't want everything to ask to be uh, the layout to just go in uh, and the, the, the row direction I want it everything to just be in column so I can just come here and say flex direction and set it to column good so things should look good now good I have that and um, what else do I want to have? I think this is good for me. Um, I can remove this because why now? Good. Everything's good there. I'm just trying to reduce as much as uh, the CSS. I only want to have the only the CSS that I, I need. I don't want to have anything I, I don't need there. Um, good and fine. Uh, let me come down to this place and say. I want to style this uh, card. I want that to look like a card, and that's not just one. I also want to make it to be a flex container because why? Because I want this email to be on top of the each label to be on top of uh, its respective uh, input uh, box. To do that, I'll come down here. I'll, I'll target the card. The card. I'll say card. I want you to be uh display the flex container and then uh, i want everything i want you flex direction to be a column as it's let's just try that and see wow okay i think that's not where to do it because if you look at it, I have um uh, if you look at it here, each field has a class on it. So what I just need to do that, I have to just set the form field to a uh, flex container and just do the need for there. So what do I want to do there, I want to set the width, I want to set the height, I want to make the card to be I want to make the card to look like uh, the, the card. So to do that, I will come down here and set the width first. I will say the width should just be maybe 400 pixels. Okay, I will say the height. I don't want to set the height, so I'll just move on. Uh, the width is this. I will say uh, border radius. Border radius should be five pixels. Then, then there is box shadow. Uh, Usually the value of functions there are five values. We have insect, we have offset, both x1 and y offset. Uh, we have uh, the blur area or the blur radius and the shadow radius. So I can just say, let me just say uh, zero pixels, uh, zero pixels. Um, I will say five pixels, five pixels, and let me just set this color here. So as you can see, I have this. Let me see what is going going on here. Oh, I have this. Uh, let, let me tell you something about this. Uh, some people might not actually understand this. There's another way I used to get my this thing clearly. I can just like enter this value. Make sure you enter this like zero p zero zero p six. When you run it. It might, it might not be what you need, but for the fact that you've set it, you can come, let me come down to this, you can use, you can inspect the component and uh, just use some uh, browser's functionality to just set that. Let me just uh, inspect that card specifically. This is the card here. You can see it here. I can adjust it here. I want it there. I'll set the blow. I'll set the blow to five. 
can see it, I can say this. You can see. So everything is just looking. So we can now copy this and go and put it there. So I can copy this and copy it here. Copy and come down to this place. See good. Paste. So still the same thing anyway. So another thing I would like to just put here is that uh, let me run it. That I would like to just create a kind of uh, padding here. So I'll say padding like 20 pixels or something like that. I'd like to create enough space because I want everybody to be able to use my form. You can see I have enough uh, this thing here. So I think this is good for now. Let's move on to the form field. I can just come down here and say form field. I'm using this. I should use like descendant uh, kind of selector, but I'm just targeting it because I only have uh, I only have limited limited content, so there won't be any clash. So I will set the display to flex. Okay, then I will set flex direction to column. Let's see. Good. You can see. You can see everyone here. Good. So everything is good. Uh, what I think I can do is that uh, I can do something like this. I can set the height of this to say, let's say 50. 50 pixels, let me see what is going on there. 50 pixels. Then to actually know the area is covered, I can just set border for now. Then later, I can now adjust it solid. Uh, save. Good. So telling you that we are covering this. So because it's already flexed, I can set a line item to say. Stretch or align with flex and so between something. Oh, oh, okay. There is this value I want to set, so I can just get it from here. Let me come down here. Is this saved already? I'll come down here and see. Okay, you on uh, the card, you know. Is from attribute. Good. I can just say, okay, a light item. Uh, baseline. No. Mm. So I don't think this will work. Let's come down here and say we don't want to do that. Okay. We don't want to do that. Okay. So what I can just set here is this. I think we might need to increase this to 70. Yeah. So this is good. Okay. All right. Um, I will remove this. Everything will look like the way I want it to be good. So I can just set like margin bottom. Set it to like uh, five pixels or ten pixels. I don't know. Or like just see how far it's going. I don't want those things to just clutch. All right. Then I can just see that uh, uh, the label. I think the best way to go about that is this descendant selector label. I want the label. I can just say like maybe font size. Font size should be uh say 16 pixels. Let me see. I uh, can just take it to like 18 pixels then. Looks like the default on the browser. I want it to be a bit bigger. Good. Then I will see that I want 
margin bottom here because I want to create some space there. I will see five pictures. Good. And um, for the input, for the form input, I want to set the height. The main height is 70 pixels. I can just set this to like 30 pixels. See how far I can go. Good. You can increase it to 40. Good. But I would like to do something too. I can style the button along the way. And see, I want the button to also look like that. Exactly. Good. So I can set the border radius because I want the edge to be curved, the border radius. I can say 5 pzx. Good. Everything is shaping up now. Good. But, um, good. But and th th then good. If you look at it here, uh, I don't like it. The font is so small, and uh, you can see the pulsar is blinking just very close to this. So I can just set like a kind of padding, both top left, bottom right, and say padding should be ten pixels if that is enough. Let me see. Hmm, that is a bit good. This is this then I can just say that the font the font size should be 18 pixels. Eighteen pixels. So as you can see, see it now. This is good enough. But the reason why we are doing all this is because there are some users that will not be able to read this thing if it's too 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 tiny. So we need to all make sure that at least not too big and not too small. We stay within that power space. Then another thing I would like to uh, do here is this: I would like to add some colors because colors can actually make this thing feel like that's what we want. Uh, for color, for combination of color, I normally use these two, this palette, as you can see. So you can change and change and change color, and you can see, you can change gradient, you can change this. So you can just select, you can select primary color and just like look at it here. Mm -hmm. You can just do. So let me just stick with this. So I want this color to be the color of my button. Okay, so I'll come here and say my button, button, only have one button, so let me just go, background, color, equals to hashtag, paste, so I have this, good, then if that is the way I need color, I need to just be white, uh, Good. I have this. All right. Another thing I don't like here is that I don't like this border. Let me see if I can remove border here. Border, 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 none. I don't want to all. But we have another problem. You can see. We don't have it. Or look at it. So we can create a kind of box shadow for them. Box shadow. And say, and let's use zero pixels, zero pixels. More like what we have in the form itself. Zero pixels, five pixels, five pixels. But I don't want to use the exact color. I want to use can see uh, we can still leave it this way but then on hover i want to actually target something 
So it's good to target on hover. You let the user know that you are hovering on this and not this. And also an active or on uh, focus as well. You want to do that as well. So I can just come here and say, okay, I just want to change. The only thing I need on hover, I just want to target this. I will say on hover, the input hover. I'll come back here and say on hover again. Okay, so I'll just save it. So, but if you look at it, what we have on the typical input and button is what we're having here. So, I would like to come back to Palatine and pick a very light color, something like this, a bit different from what we have there. Copy. Now, come back here and just do a kind of blur. So, we are going there. So, if I over on this, you see, if I'm on this, you see. So the other thing is this, I think we can, we have to remove the focus. Uh, I will see, she just does it to the focus as well. Uh, I can just come down here. I want to target the focus. Copy, or paste it here. Targeting the focus now. Focus. But well, I don't want to do that to. I don't want to do that to button. So let's just switch it there. Let me just do say I want to remove the border first. Okay, save. On focus. Wow. Let me let me just inspect it here. You might need to come back to this, but let me just quickly inspect it. Uh to save our time, inspect it. Uh, let me just come down here. Um focus. Where is hover? Focus. Focus is now it's active, no. Over, yes, visited, no. Oh, focus visible. So I will target focus visible. I want to off. But uh, not. Wow. There is not it. Mm, focus visible, as you can see, online offset zero. Outline. You see, outline. I'll, I'll come back here. See, focus visible. Outline. So also, I would like to just bring this down. At your know, focus, I want something like this. You see? So another thing we should just pay attention here is this: uh, the form, the card. Can we just set padding top? No margin top. But there is no space between sign up and the card here, so it doesn't look good at the top. That could be, I'll see, like uh, 10 pages. Good. What is this? Probably 20 pages. You should just go up a bit more. Mm -hmm. This is nice. Good. So we have all these now. Okay. So another thing we want to do here is this. You can see uh, there is something I want us to do before we just call it a wrap here. Um, 
this is actually saying that there is validation error here and as you can see from the browser we have uh, the autofill and also blocking the error so in, in that case i would advise that you should just uh, find a way of disabling that probably and just do your own uh, error but for us as, as, uh, at this level you can just leave that another thing we can just do is that uh, we can just show like a kind of uh, indication like probably we just change the border to red or something like that so to do that there is what we call there is a pseudo clock call uh, required or something like that i think we can use required there we can just use like uh, a, a valid or invalid so we can just come down here okay I can just use something like this and just say come down you I know uh what's it called you just come down and I want to target valid or invalid if we are invalid I want it to change the border I want it to change I want to change me to change the border to let's say one pixel solid red. So let's see, let's see. Oh, you see it. So these are required, but because currently they are invalid, so you have that there. So you see it. So somehow we might want to actually off the visible this thing like let me just set it to like um, two five i think the, the color contrast is clashing somehow and i also set this to like two 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 Oh, <laughs> it should be two pixels. Run. So that is that. So now I think things look a bit good. So can we just try and check this against the uh, WC AG compliance and also the contrast accessibility compliance. So we can just look for like a tool online. Let me just see. I think there is one that uh, MJ used the other time. I can just try and use it to test it. So usually we don't I don't I don't really expect anyone of us to be perfect right now. Um, you can make mistakes. So with this, you will definitely check if you miss one or two things. So if you miss anything here, if this report it, as you can see, we don't actually have uh, any error as far as this uh, HTML checker is concerned. <clears throat> okay so let's now go and check for something like contrast i think it should be uh web accessibility checker tools yes i can just come down here there is one particular i want to use okay let's use this to check the contrast contrast just talking about the color the color you know, I told you there are some users that can read for long on the screen, and if you do maintain the contrast, there some users may not be able to effectively use your uh, website. So let's paste the same thing here and just check contrast. 
So this is going to report if we have anything to just improve upon. You can see, congratulations, no automatic color control issue found on the page tested. So everything looks good as far as this is concerned. So this is what I feel like uh, an accessible form should look like. You should have the validation in there. You should have the label. Then another thing I have to just call your attention on is that uh, there's what we call placeholder uh, attribute for each input. I, I don't want you to confuse your purpose. Label is strictly for labeling inputs. Why placeholder is for providing additional hint for the input. For instance, let me say, if I want to tell a user that there is a particular format that the, a, a, an image should look like, uh, before the user even click this thing, you know what the, the, the this would definitely tell that uh, it should be in, the, in this format. But we need we can just give a kind of example. Let me just do it here. And I come to my HTML and say, uh, you good. I can say placeholder equals to I say eg. I can say abi at abu or abi dot abu at outlook. Com. So if you run this and you come down here, you see that you are already informing the user this is the typical example of uh, an email. So the user have a kind of hint on how to actually approach this. This actually uh, uh, this really improve the accessibility of this this uh, because the experience is awesome. I don't need to keep on try and try and try and try and try. You just give. So this is not peculiar about this kind of form because, you know, but there are other forms, like if you want to create uh, a form to get data from students, like probably kind of registration form. So there are some data that, uh, that users are not used to. But there is, this is a way of telling them, this is the format we are expecting you to uh, import for us. So this is just uh, form accessibility kind of a, uh, uh, a lecture from me to you and i know maybe you have one or two questions to uh want me to answer you can just post it on the channel uh, and i'm very sure we still have a lot of people to provide some answer and i will try as much as possible to actually be available for like probably a few hours before uh, after we drop this uh, uh video and i really appreciate your time thank you uh, bye for now